Hello, this is Catherine at I Know I Need to Stop Talking. Hello, lovelies. How are we doing? Thank fuck they've turned the sun down. I'm so grateful. I mean, I never realised it was possible for one's knees to sweat quite so much. And yet here we are. It's been a very hot week, hasn't it? And I've realised that I've definitely reached that age where, I mean, water retention, fucking hell. I genuinely think midway through the week you could probably have hired me as out as some kind of like children's flotation device just ridiculous and then and then where does it all go well I can tell you where it all goes as the temperature dropped so did my bladder and I had the world's longest wee this morning and I'm sure this right here is the cutting edge information that makes you want to tune in and listen to this podcast but yes it's been very hot and then there was a storm last night certainly where we were there was a massive storm last night I love a good storm well I love a good storm from the inside and safety and sanctity of my home I'm sure if I was like out sleeping in a tent all these people going off to is it latitude that's made me sound very old hasn't it i think it is latitude festival i mean sleeping in a tent at a festival sounds like a bad idea to start with in my personal opinion and my my camping adventures are are well documented on here previously i.e i went once it was fucking horrendous never again but the thought of camping in the middle of a thunderstorm is yeah less than less than appealing so if you were camping i hope that your tent stayed dry and and did not leak and and really i hope that you weren't actually in a in a tent at all but in five star hotel accommodation which to my mind is a is a much nicer way to 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 experience anything in life generally albeit i realize there is something of a price differential between a five star hotel and some canvas over your head i mean if it's not got walls and a roof just don't trust it that's that's my view anyway let's not get diverted by by the thoughts of, of of camping i mean horrendous but yes it's cooler thank fuck i'm sorry if you like the sun and to be fair the sun has come back out this afternoon but yeah it was it was getting a a little bit a little bit much so i'm, I'm very happy to be feeling slightly less livid now that the now that the temperature has gone gone down i mean give me 24 hours and i'll be moaning about how cold it is i'm nothing if not predictable come to you on a very glamorous Saturday afternoon as always because my life is is so glamorous and I think as I say I imagine all these these other proper podcasters in their proper podcasting recording studios and I don't know what they do to like warm up for a podcast maybe they do breathing exercises maybe they do a little bit of yoga I did a re-emptying of the dishwasher and you may well ask what is Catherine what is a re-emptying of a dishwasher it's basically the experience you have when your child tells you that they've emptied the dishwasher and you go to it only to find that no, this is a lie. They have not emptied the dishwasher. They have, if anything, they have, can you anti-empty the dishwasher? Well, if you can, that is that is definitely what my children have, have done to the dishwasher. They, they they have shocking form for this. And to be fair, I'm pretty certain this is this is karma biting me hard because I'm pretty certain I did the same as a, as a small child. But fucking hell, what is it with kids? Like literally, they're happy to have rooms that look like some kind of festering rubbish tip complete with tinges of every type of mould you can imagine, but get them to open the dishwasher and take out a bowl that might still have half a pea clinging to the edge of it. Oh dear God, it's like, I don't know. It's like, oh mother, how could you expect us possibly to take out this bowl? It's such a pea. Oh God, the, the whole experience of it, the trauma, the trauma, mother, the trauma. Um, So I tend to find that, you know, even after we've had World War fucking three over whose fucking turn it is to empty the fucking dishwasher if I hear that argument one more fucking time it is the olympic event in our household is losing one shit over whose turn it is to empty the dishwasher but even once that's happened and they've gone to it and they fucking emptied it I've just opened it just now after Beth is like yeah I've, I've t- completely emptied the dishwasher in what parallel universe have you emptied the dishwasher there's like about 30 items still in it oh yeah it was dirty I'm looking at it. It's not dirty. And then they'll like come over and with this microscopic precision point out some particle of a foodstuff that is barely visible to the naked eye. Like I say, if they applied this same kind of laser precision to how they, you know, approached hygiene in in their bedrooms or indeed any other aspect of their life, I might be slightly less bothered. The big one in our house is we have we have a series of very small glass bowls. They're used for like sort of like crisps and olives and things. And yeah, we, we, we find we use, I was gonna say we find we get through a few of these. The reason we get through a few of these is it was a, it was a classic Mr. I Know I Need to Stop Talking purchasing moment where we have a few occasions along the years when we've purchased stuff from eBay, which has not been quite the scale or dimensions that we thought. 
the TV cabinet that we once bought, which ended up arriving and being so large it couldn't fit through the front door, so we had to put it out in the shed instead, being a case in point. Now, I don't know whether Mr. I Know I Need to Stop Talking knew the quantities he was purchasing or just thought it was a bargain, but I kind of vaguely mentioned, oh, we could really do it with some more kind of snack bowls. He was like, don't worry, snack bowls, I'm on it. And and my God, he was on it, as I discovered the, the week after when... I think circa 70, seven, zero, seven, zero snack bowls materialised in my house. We have a lot of snack bowls. If you need snack bowls, we have snack bowls. And for some reason, there's something about these snack bowls. It's like, I don't know, is there a force field around them? My kids physically cannot pick them up and take them out of the dishwasher. So I went to open the dishwasher and they build up, right? Because they don't empty them. And then they put some dirty stuff in and then it builds up. And then we're in some horrendous cycle where I'm repeatedly washing the same 70 fucking snack bowls every single day, completely defeating the point of the fucking dishwasher. Honestly, it's painful. The reason I had kids was to was to be useful for stuff like emptying the dishwasher. And no, now it turns out you might as well just get along and, and, and do it yourself. So yeah, I've just um, extracted all of the snack bowls from my dishwasher, put them into the cupboard where they will remain for no more than 24 hours, I envisage, before they've been taken out, used and are cycling their way back round the dishwasher. So however professional podcasters prepare for their podcasts, I can probably say with with certainty that that, that this 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 dishwasher emptying is, is is not it. However, not all bad. I did come back early to find that Beth has actually tidied half of the downstairs of the house, which has now made me immediately suspicious because what the fuck is she hiding that I'm about to find out later? And and it's Beth, so it's not gonna be something small, right? This will be a, a big thing. She's been really good this week, so you might have seen on the blog, she ended up having to self-isolate for the last week of term, and while she was giving it all that her life was terrible and completely unfair because Jamie was finishing a week before her, when it came to the crunch and she discovered she had to miss her beloved sports day, which, I mean, God, the differences between me and Beth are, are, are very, very clear in moments like this. She's devastated, obviously, one of the sportiest kids in the school, not going to get to go to sports, sports day. I mean, for me, that would have been a gift. Self-isolation would have been a gift. I think Jamie's livid that he too did not manage to use self-isolation to get out of his own sports day. But yeah, I, I, I did feel for her. I did feel for her this week when she when she had to miss her beloved beloved sports day and hooray for her amazing teacher. And God, teachers, TAs, school staff, we love you. We bloody love you. Her teacher, who 9am on the morning of sports day, where if I were a teacher, and this is one of just many reasons as to why I'm not a teacher, I would have been hiding out in the toilets swigging from a hip flask her teacher instead took the time to pick up the phone and phone Beth because she knew how disappointed Beth would be at missing sports day and genuinely tears to my eyes. It's, oh, honestly, you're amazing. School staff, everybody in education, you are bloody amazing. And before I get the water battery, so are lots of other professions, but there are almost no other professions that get the same level of vilification as education staff get. Thank you very much. Obviously, the Olympics has, has started, hasn't it? So I kind of suggested to her that maybe she, she might like to, to watch some of that, although she, she's kind of disinterested. I, unless it's her winning the, the gold medals, I think she's I think she's less interested. I, sh- I shared on, on Facebook this week a, a post from, from the last Olympics in Rio when the kids were watching. Obviously, they were that bit younger then, and, and their commentary as they watched it had me absolutely creased up laughing. Uh, my favourite, without a shadow of doubt, was when there was a, there was quite a nasty crash in the road race in the cycling, and Beth <laughs> looked at this poor woman in, in total derision and went, "Well, should have kept her stabilisers on then, shouldn't she?" And you know, my attempts to suggest that maybe if you're maybe if you're cycling at the Olympics, you might not need stabilisers was again met with contempt and a kind of, "Well, she clearly does, or she wouldn't have crashed." And it's hard to argue, hard to argue with that, really. She also, there was a very damning moment when we were watching the Olympics and I was kind of doing the, oh, you know, maybe I'd be, maybe, maybe mommy could be, could be in the Olympics. And, you know, kind of, even at that, even at that tender age, my children's cynicism, Beth in particular, for for my ability to do anything well in the, in the field of sporting prowess was, was very limited. But she kind of, we were watching the gymnastics and I said to her, I said, "How, how many points do you think I would get if I was doing this? And not even not even a hesitation that's what stings it wasn't even a hesitation she went zero okay cool so n- no points at all and then I think she felt bad because she's you know she's a very good girl at heart I think she felt bad because then she kind of she thought about it and she went well if you tried really hard mommy and I'm expecting her at this point to say you probably could get a 10 points even though it's a lie you know I'm, I'm expecting her to kind of you know sort of make me feel better she went well if you tried really hard I do think you could perhaps get one point. One point? Yeah, I do think you could get one point. 
because I do think if you did try, I think you could be quite good at roly polies. And that right there is my gymnastic career summed up in a nutshell. I'm thinking, where am I going to excel? On the beam? On the on the on the thing? Is it the horse with the things coming out the top? I don't even. Well, this perhaps is is why my gymnastics career has not quite taken off as I, as I thought it might do. But no, roly polies apparently might be where my where my talent lies. So if you ever see at the next Olympics, if you if you see kind of a new event of, of roly polies, watch out, watch out. I may I may just be I may just be coming. As if dishwasher emptying wasn't fun enough. We've been worming the cats today. Oh, fucking hell. So any non-cat owners are probably listening to this going, what are you, what are you, what are you complaining about? You're just worming the cats. Any cat owners will probably be nodding their head in recognition at, at this point. So, oh God. So worming cats effectively involves getting your cats to take tablets. There's various other treatments that you can like put on the back of their neck, but let's be honest, they don't really work when your cats are killing as much shit as mine are. I mean, classic, classic moment this week. So I'm working from home. I'm on a Zoom call. It's a fairly important Zoom call. I'm sitting there. I've got the windows open because it's so fucking hot. And in the background, Brexit suddenly leaps, leaps through the window meowing her head off she doesn't usually meow very loud she's meowing her head off it's so fucking loud i haven't got headphones on so this whole thing is being played out in front of the vaguely entertained person that i'm, I'm speaking to on the call and she she leaps through and meowing her head off chasing a live mouse around around the room so that that is ideal if i were to sum up what i wanted from a zoom call in in one word it, it, it would be like live mouse in the background because you know if you want a bit of livening up of working from home a live mouse is definitely one way to do it but yeah, with the amount of shit that they kill and eat, there, there is no way you can get away with substandard worming treatments. You, you need the hard, hardcore stuff. You need your drum tell. Um, not an advert, but you need your drum tell. And as, again, long-time listeners will know, obviously for a long time we had Sandwich, our old cat. Sandwich is such a good girl. She's such a good girl. She's an old lady now. She just wants to sit on laps. But nevertheless, I thought, you know, prudent to make sure that she's wormed as well. So we started with Sandwich. I, I, I like to, you know, kind of build up, build up the challenge. So I started with Sandwich went over to her, gently eased her jaws open, she growled a bit, she didn't like it, put the tablet in, stroked her throat, she swallowed it down, good girl, what a good girl, she got some tuna because she was such a good girl, and then I was kind of flushed with success, which obviously is the mistake, it's the rookie mistake that you shouldn't make, so Sandwich is a good girl, my two younger ones, my two rescue kittens that are part Moggy and part Bengal, which is key, because Bengals are bloody smart and won't do anything they don't fucking want to do, oh god I love my cats but they are little shits, they really are, so I thought having started with the easy one, I'd, I'd go to the other end of the equation and I would go for ASAP, who is the naughtiest of all. She's the one who scales the side of the house just to rock up in the middle of the night. Um, indeed, as she did the other night in Jamie's room with a live mouse. Ideal. So I thought I'd start with her, picked her up, wrapped her in a towel because, well, if you, I mean, if you could see the state of me now, I literally, I look like I've been battling with an alligator. No, no, I've just been worming cats and attempted to prise her jaws open. She was having absolutely none of it and basically before very long she she just managed to, to wriggle away entirely so okay fine gave up on that one thought i'd try brexit next because she's slightly more docile she's slightly more docile so wrapped her up in the towel which she was all right about i mean she's she's quite dopey as cats go so she was like she was all right about being wrapped up in a towel put the put the tablet into her mouth and she quite likes food so i was kind of thinking well maybe she'll go with this because it's it's eating right it's, it's something that's eating and and sure enough she swallowed it down. I'm like, yes, yes, I am the god of cat worming. It's not much of a superpower, but you take what you can get. I'm the god of cat worming. I have successfully wormed Brexit, at which point she jumped out of my arms. I'm watching for her to like spit it out because I'm, I'm wise to, to, to what cats do. Uh, waiting for her to, to spit it out. She's swallowed it down. So it's legit. She's had the tablet. I put her onto the floor. She makes herself vomit like the world's first bulimic cat, WTF, she makes herself vomit and vomits up the fucking pill. So now I've got a vomited out pill and cat vomit. Great idea. Okay, so at this point I go back to ASAP. I'm like, right, Brexit clearly is, I mean, that's that's a skill there, you know, fair, fair play, grudging, grudging respect for my opponent. I'll come back to you. Then I think, right, ASAP, okay, she's too smart. I'm not going to force the pill down her, I'm not going to be able to do it. So I am going to get her some cat food and I'm going to chop the pill up small, and I'm going to put it in the cat food, and she's going to eat it. She loves cat food. It's going to work perfectly. Put down the cat food. She rushes over to it. She looks at it in absolute disgust, like, what the fuck are you trying to pass off to me? She eats a little bit of jelly from around the edges, and then turns her nose up and jumps out the window. 
Good. So it's going really well at this point. It's going really fucking well. So I decided then to leave it. This was yesterday. I decided then right, I'm going to leave it then. Obviously, pray sandwich a lot for being a very good girl. And so then this morning I wrote to Mr. I know I need to stop talking. And I said, right, OK, we're going to have to bring in. We're going to have to bring in the big guns. It's time for the willy blanket. Now, I appreciate at this point that sounds fucking mental, but it was indeed time to bring in the willy blanket. Now, the willy blanket is so named because it's a big blanket type throw that we have in the living room. We have two of them. And when we first got them, I was, you know, they're very nice and new and pristine. And for some reason, well, I say for some reason, it's because everybody in my house is perpetually fucking naked. I said, right, I want to make it really clear. These are not to go on willies. We all wear pants. There is no, we do not want the blankets. These are not willy blankets. So needless to say, they're now forever known as willy blankets. Ideal. But the willy blankets are brilliant because they're perfect actually for, for wrapping up and securing a cat that's likely to lose their shit when you attempt to put a tablet down. So this morning, Mr. I need to stop talking and I, again, pray sandwich being a good girl. What a good girl. We started with, we started with ASAP. We went, we went to the big guns. We started with ASAP successfully wrapped her up in the willy blanket she's growling for all she's worth mr i know i need to stop talking is holding her calmly but firmly as you are supposed to hold a cat when you worm them i prize open her jaws and i put in the tablet and then i do what all the books say stroke their throat and they'll swallow the tablet yeah well they obviously have reckoned without asap we sat there and i timed it because we were going to watch the football in the olympics on the television we sat there for 27 minutes ASAP in the woolly blanket, Mr. I know I need to stop talking, holding her, me gently stroking her throat, praising her, telling her what a good girl she was. No joy. So at this point, we've got the kids to go and open a tin of tuna. She loves tuna. She loves tuna. We were like thinking, right, we'll get a little bit of tuna, put it in front of her mouth. She'll open her mouth to get the tuna. And at that point, we can push both the tuna and the and the tablet down her down her throat. So we get the tuna and, and fair play to this girl. This is like willpower of steel. Your favourite food someone's balanced a bit of it basically next to your nose and your mouth she doesn't budge she does not move Mr. Dino stop talking gently kind of sort of rubs it towards her rubs it towards her mouth and her gums nothing absolutely nothing at this point she's got kind of like some sort of white bits around the edge of her mouth because of course the pill's dissolving because it's been in there for a long time it's 27 minutes I go to Mr. Dino and just stop talking I'm like right she must have swallowed it. She must have swallowed it. She's done a kind of like a couple of, you know, she's sort of given me the impression, done a couple of kind of swallows, giving me the impression that she swallowed it. Put it on the floor. She spits the fucking pill out. I'm like, I literally don't know where to go with this next. So in the end, Miss Strano needs to stop talking. With the, with the skills of an alchemist, went into the kitchen, crushed the tablets into fine powder, mixed it with tuna, put it down with the tuna, ASAP ate it. Yes, success, one cat wormed. I'm like, we're on the home straight now, mate. We are on the home straight. We've got Brexit left. She loves her food. Do that again for Brexit. We'll be there. We'll be sorted. He puts down the pill, crushed up, in the tuna, calls in Brexit, the hungriest cat in the world. Brexit takes one look at it, stalks off in the other direction. I fucking give up. I literally, this is like, this is like a full-time job to worm these cats. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I'm sure when I was a kid and we had cats, it did not seem this hard. And the reason I remember that was because... <laughs> Oh, this is just coming to my head. This is a brilliant memory. We had a cat called Muffin, my, my childhood cat when I was growing up. And we, it was one afternoon, probably Saturday afternoon, we were in the lounge and it's time to worm Muffin. So my dad got the pill, picked up Muffin, put the pill into her mouth. Muffin, much like sandwich, good girl, stroked her throat. She swallowed the pill down like a good girl. And then my dad pointed across the room and went, wow, that was quick. Look, there goes the worm. And there was this brief moment where me and my sister went, what? And then killed ourselves laughing because obviously he's doing what dads do. No, a worm, worming tablets do not work that instantaneously, I can I can assure you. But they are very necessary. And and because I now feel that my I'm kind of almost on a bound on these podcasts every week to put you off your meal. So if, if you're eating now, now's the time to stop. The the very reason it's so necessary to, to worm cats is because of what once happened when, when Muffin was sat with me and my sister one evening when we were kids in the lounge watching something on TV. And I, I'm forever grateful that she made the decision to jump off my lap. And she did. And as she jumped onto the lap, my, off my lap, and she stood in the middle of the living room floor, and she looked what I could only describe as slightly startled. And then a massive, huge, great big fucking tapeworm flew out of her ass. And honest to God, t- 
to this day, I can still remember how utterly appalled I was. I was like, what the fuck is this? And fair play to my mum, who came in, and I suppose, you know, I'm a parent now, maybe you just get on with this shit now, I completely make the kids do it. Just went, oh, for goodness, me and my sister were like hysterical, like, oh my God, it's a worm come out of her ass. And but was just got tissue picked up and went, don't be so ridiculous, and flushed it down the toilet. I mean, I suppose that is one effective way of, of worming a cat when the worm comes comes out its ass. But yeah, visions that, of my dad. Yeah, look, there goes the worm and having it fly out the cat's ass. I mean, that would be a very effective treatment, wouldn't it? But that is not how it works. So yeah, that was that was that was my joyous joyous. I mean, God, my life is so glamorous, isn't it? This is this is clearly what it what it means to you know kind of have a podcast is to live this kind of kind of glamorous glamorous life. Then we went for a walk. Me and Jamie this afternoon. Obviously, Beth's still self isolating, so she's not allowed out. Which if she was disappointed at missing sports day, it's fucking, I mean, God, she's used this as a reason to gloat over Jamie. Yeah, I'd love to come on a walk, mummy. No, you wouldn't. But I can't because I'm self-isolating. Yeah, that's a very convenient excuse to get you out of things that you don't want to do. And we had a lovely walk. I mean, obviously, Jamie did the traditional teenager bit of bitching and moaning before we leave the house. Standard. But then we went out and, and it was it was beautiful out there. And we went on a walk. As I've said before, we're lucky enough to live very near the coast. So we went off for a walk down nearby the sea. And we're walking along. It's a beautiful afternoon on a Saturday. And I'm going to Jamie. This is very quiet. It's very weird. We, I mean, we literally didn't see a soul as we walked around the coast. I said, this is a bit weird. Why is it so quiet? And, you know, he's Jamie. He's just like, well, oh, I don't know. Probably doing something else. Then we'll go on a walk. Not surprised. I hate walks. Shush, shut up. And so we, we rounded the corner. I mean, we literally hadn't seen a soul. And it's usually quite a busy part of the coast. And then we ran to the corner and I realised why we hadn't seen a soul. Because the sea wall had fallen away in the recent storms. And there was a great big massive fucking bit of rushing seawater between us and the and the rest of the walk. And obviously at this point a sensible person would have turned back, but I am not that person. So I went, come on in, son, we can get over there. It'll be fine. And it was fine. And we and we made it across very safely, other than the fact that both of us were soaked through to our knees. But you know, it's a hot day, right? Hot weather. I've got no time for hot weather. It's, I said to Jamie, oh, it's just like a little trip to the seaside. So he looked at me with... um slightly infuriated eyes as I'd completely ruined his new Nike trousers but ah come out in the wash it'll be fine it'll be fine obviously this morning's highlight was my favorite blog post of the year and I can say that with impunity because I do not really write it I mean I just introduce it and all of you guys make it happen the great I know I need to stop talking book recommendations post of the year I love it I love it love it love it every year we do one if you haven't seen it it's up on Facebook and I get all of you to recommend your favourite books, your favourite reads and then I pick five or six of them and I take them for, I mean I know, let's be honest, holidays are probably not what they not what they would usually be this year in these times of Covid but the joy of a good book is you can read it anywhere and it can transport you to somewhere else and I've read some amazing books over the years from your recommendations, absolutely amazing. Last year I read Where the Crawdads Sing, someone had recommended it and I thought oh no it's not going to be my type of thing at all and I was so wrong. I mean it's not the kind of thing I'd usually read at all but I was transported and everybody I've recommended it to has loved it as well. So I loved that, I loved The Green Mile, Stephen King's The Green Mile, that was, that was a brilliant brilliant read. Loved The Storyteller by Jodie Pickle. I mean, to be fair, most of her books are amazing. And, you know, there's been some misses as well. And I'm just going to pull out The Book Thief. And I fully appreciate I'm in a massive minority, probably of one here. But, oh my God, I fucking hated that book. I hated that book. I actually have, like, a strong visceral view about it. I mean, it's beautifully, beautifully written. Incredibly crafted. What skill. But fucking hell. It was, a, oh my God, I dragged myself through every single page. And at that point, because that was two or three years ago, I was still in the phase of, no, no, I must, I must keep going with this because surely I will get to the end and it will pay off. And then I got to the end and I realised the only payoff that I had was that I'd wasted a day of my life on a book that I hated. So no, never again. I have kind of got, I've like got, depends how long the chapters are, anything from a three to 10 chapter rule. If you get to that point, you're not enjoying it life's too short sack it off I mean I say that even if it's one of my books you're reading like if you if you're not enjoying it sack it off life is too short to read I was going to say to read bad books I don't think they're bad books the book thief is not a bad book it was just a bad book for me and maybe we should be on more honest with that right that there are some books they're not bad books per se but they can be bad books for you and fucking hell that was a bad bad book bad book for me I mean I do listen to myself talking now about you know having time off having holidays when you can read and I do think that the me of, you know, sort of, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years ago would have gone, what the fuck? 
a holiday where you have time to read, fuck off. So I don't want anybody with young kids to think that I have forgotten how fucking... I mean, God, if I thought Book Thief was a grind, holidays with small children. I think I wrote quite a lot about this at the time on the blog because I was just, again, one of the many things that people don't tell you about what it's like to have small children is the fact that holiday is the greatest misnomer the world has ever known. Holidays with small children weren't fucking holidays. It was like fucking boot camp. I mean, I have never been so tired because it's basically, it's all the same shit that you have to deal with every single day as a parent, but it's in a brand new location where your kids' routines are probably completely thrown up the spout and you're having to improvise in perhaps a strange house or hotel that you don't know very well. And oh my God, my, my peak this is hell holiday was Jamie was nearly two and Mr. I know I need to stop talking to parents had very kindly arranged for us to go away with his sister and family to a beautiful farmhouse down in North Devon. So it's a long old drive, but actually, you know, drives with small kids. If, you, if you're lucky and you have kids that sleep in the car, that bit, that bit's the breeze. In fact, that bit is the holiday. The drive to the destination when you have small children. If they sleep, that's your holiday. Make the most of it. Relax, chill out, have a conversation, listen to music, because that's it. Once you get there, the holiday is over. And it was the most exhausting week of my life. So Jamie was very much at an age when sleep was not just for the week. Sleep was entirely superfluous to his needs altogether. And new space, new place. So we we bought various devices for him to sleep in, but he decided that where he really wanted to sleep was in the bed with me clutching my face. Now our room only had one double bed. And I, I do not I was going to say I don't like sharing beds, and that's a bit harsh on Mr. I know I need to stop talking, but I think if he was on this podcast, he would probably also agree. I am not good at sharing beds. I like my space. I like my own duvet. Secret of a happy marriage, kids. Get your own duvets. Honestly, it's a game changer. And so we have always had... I get very confused with with bed sizes, but it's whatever the biggest bed is. Is that a super king? If it is, that's the bed we have. If it's not, if there's a bigger bed, we have that one. I don't like to be touched in my sleep at all whether in a romantic sense or a kiki sense. When I'm going to sleep, I'm going to sleep, okay? And you don't disturb me. But Jamie obviously was unsettled in a new place, so he decided that he wanted to sleep in this bed, this double bed. Double beds, when you had a super king bed, are very fucking small. Me and Mr. I know I need to stop talking would have struggled just the two of us in that bed, let alone when you then add a small child into the mix. So Mr. I know I need to stop talking is nothing if not creative. So he came up with the good, bad, indifferent, I don't know, it seemed like genius at the time because we were so fucking knackered, idea that he would take the mattress off the bed and Jamie and I would sleep on the mattress on the floor and he, taking one for the team, big style, would sleep on the bed base. I don't know if you've ever tried to sleep on a bed base. It's not very comfortable. It's a base for a reason. You need a mattress. And so we all settled in into this, this kind of this strange room which smelt rather of damp and tossed and turned and shouted and yelled and did everything other than sleep for the week and oh my goodness me so you know kind of holidays are hard work for small children anyway because it's constant you know if you're on the beach constant fucking vigilance read a fucking book mate you're not gonna have time to look in the opposite direction to your kids you know going to the toilet it's like a fucking spa break when you're on holiday with children so you know the idea that that you could do all that and do it on i mean we were probably averaging 90 minutes sleep if that, each of us, I was so tired. So I can still remember how tired I felt on that holiday. To the point that actually we ended up saying to, to Mr. I know I need to stop talking to parents. Thank you so much. It's been lovely. We're actually going to go home a couple of days early, if that's all right. Because we were so fucking tired. And then we came home. And Jamie still didn't fucking sleep. But compared to the hour and a half sleep we were getting, four hours a night felt like fucking paradise. I've never been so happy to get back from a holiday ever. So if you are currently parenting small children and thinking, holiday, reading books on holiday, fuck off. All I want to say is I hear you. I've been you. And it does get better. It genuinely, genuinely does get better. You know, they get to the age now where they they don't even want to, to, you know, kind of really look in your general direction, provided you're one of those slack parents a la me who is more than happy to facilitate excessive use of screen time during holidays on the basis it gives you time to read your books my kids are happy as fucking larry go on the beach why would i want to do that when i can stare at a screen 24 7 so yeah i do hear you if you're not in the in the ages of of being able to read books on holiday but the good news is 
you do get back there. You do get back to the point where you can read books on holidays and yeah, your children ignore you completely. It's utter bliss, utter, utter fucking bliss, utter bliss. There's a photo of me taken on that holiday, sitting on, on a beach and my, my skin, I mean, my skin is always pale, but with lack of lack of sleep, my skin is like a whiter shade of pale. And I've got sunglasses on and my hair is just gone crazy. It's frizzing and curling all over the shop. And I, I, I look, I'm sitting on a rock. I can, I can I only describe the look on my face as livid. And a lovely friend of mine saw the photo when I'd shared it on Facebook after the holiday from hell and commented on it and went, you look like a model on Coke. And yes, that pretty much summed up how I, how I felt on that holiday. Oh, fucking hell. So tiring. So tiring. Other news as heralded last week, had my second vaccine. Yes, vaccine. Oh God, scientists, NHS, researchers, clever people who make this happen. You're fucking amazing. Honestly, I did nearly have a little cry. It was amazing. It was amazing having my second vaccine. I am so, so, so grateful to have had that. Obviously, very disappointed for you vaccine conspiracists. I've got no 5G signal whatsoever. I was promised 5G signal and an unlimited supply of Microsoft products. I feel really badly let down by, by all of these, these false theories. But yeah, I've had my second vaccine. I feel so, so grateful. I understand there's lots of people who can't get the vaccine. And I understand there's lots of people who've, who've researched and, and have made the decision not to get the vaccine. But, you know, if kind of like you just haven't done it yet because you haven't got not bothered getting around to it, please, please, please go and get your vaccine. For me, the most terrifying thing was going to this vaccine centre and it's a major vaccine centre near, near to where I live, it was like deserted. I mean, genuinely deserted. When I went for my first vaccine, it was round. There was like me and then maybe two other people followed in. So please, 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 if you're kind of thinking, I do want to get a vaccine, I just haven't got around to it yet, please do go and get it. And, and volunteers, NHS people, scientists, you're so clever, you're so amazing, I bloody love you. And also, where is my 5G signal? Because that shit would be very useful right now. I hope everybody's keeping safe and well. It is still strange, strange, strange times right now. And I hope, as always, that you're taking time for you, that you're taking time out to look after you as well. And fucking hell, if you're going on holiday with small children, the absolute best of British to you. I have never been so tired in my life. Holiday bullshit. Look after yourselves. Take care. Lots of love. I will see you next week. Bye bye.